This video is presented by Sailrite. In this video, we'll be showing you how to install stanchions. These stanchions are used for lifelines that go around the perimeters of a deck on a boat. This is the Islander 37 sailboat. We've already removed the old stanchions, which were in very bad shape. And Jim is now going to show you how to install a brand new stanchion using Sailrite's hardware. This is a list of the complete hardware that you'll need to order to make one stanchion. Obviously there are more tools that are needed as well, but this is the hardware. This is Loctite epoxy putty. It's supposed to set in five minutes and you just pull off whatever you need and knead it together and put it in place. We'll see what, how it works. For your information, some of the deck has been primed with an all grip 545 epoxy. Later, he'll be applying four or five coats of the Interlux Bright Side, which is a urethane one part finish. The old stanchion bases that we removed had holes in different positions, so we need to fill those holes, and we're going to use this epoxy here to do that and then drill new holes for our new stanchion base from Sailrite. I need. I need it together. So it takes on a cream color. Be sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions on the epoxy that you purchased. I'm going to my holes. Uh, this type of epoxy cures in about five minutes, so you want to do it rather quickly. Jim's just applying it with his finger, but you could use a tool to help push the epoxy down deep into the hole. You'll still always get a little bit of epoxy outside the hole, but maybe not as much as Jim is here. The new stanchion base will cover most of the majority of this epoxy that we're applying on now, so it'll mostly be invisible, but we are going to work it a little bit towards the end here with a wire brush, and we're going to try to clean up the epoxy around the hole, so using a tool may help to avoid a lot of cleanup after a while. Remember, it cures relatively quickly, so you want to get to it right away. So we're going to use a wire brush here. This is a few minutes after we've applied it, and already it's starting to cure to the point where we can't really take it off very easily with the wire brush. It's still a little bit pliable, but not too much. We're trying to make it blend into the surface of the uh, rough grip. Jim's done a pretty good job of cleaning up the excess epoxy, but he's going to use a sharp tool here to, to create those small squares you see in the deck. Before Jim applied the All Grip Epoxy Primer 545, this uh, deck was in bad shape, a lot of cracks, and that helped fill the cracks. Then he used an 80 grit sandpaper. Then he'll put on four or five coats of the bright side by Interlux. In between each coat, he started with a 120 grit, a 180 grit and a 220 grit sandpaper between each coat. Here you can see the finished surface with that Interlux bright side, that's the Seattle gray color. And you can see that epoxy that we used to fill the holes. We're drilling a new hole here and positioning our stanchion base. Before drilling the succeeding holes, we want to install a bolt into that hole that we drilled earlier to keep the stanchion base in the appropriate position. We were a little worried here because it kept drilling and drilling. We thought we were going into a bulkhead, but uh, we found out later that we were okay. The uh, drill bit came out the other side. Don't forget to install the uh, bolt into that hole to keep the positioning appropriate, and then drill your other hole, install a bolt, and then drill the last hole. So I put in a screw each time I drilled a hole to make sure that everything was lined up and that it stayed in place. Now I'm going to pull them all out and two of these screws are too short and I'm going to clean up this mess and then I'm going to put silicone on and lay the base down and snug it in place, not tight but snug. 
until the silicone dries and then I'll tighten it up. Here are the four holes that we've just drilled. These gray areas are the old holes that uh, I filled. And the new stanchion base is not the same shape as the old stanchion base, so we had to fill those holes with epoxy. All right, so this is ready to go on. Now, first we have to silicone it. Ready? So once again, I'm just siliconing the areas of penetration. No reason to do the whole thing. I want water to run under it and out. Okay. We want the bolts to protrude through the deck so that we can put a washer and a nut or a back blade and a nut on the back side. The uh, outside screws are long enough, however, the inside screws are not, so we're going to have to use a slotted head for those screws and a Phillip head for the back because we don't have any other screws. Now, silicone is going to ooze out. And I'll just let that dry and then cut it away with a utility knife. If you choose, you can use a blue painter's masking tape around the perimeter of the base to prevent the silicone from having to be cleaned up. Now I'm going to let this set. There are no nuts on the bottom. Uh, then we'll put the nuts on while well, somebody holds the heads here. And we'll tighten them from below so we, never, we don't uh, move the screws. That way everything should stay sealed. We've now allowed the silicone to dry for approximately an hour. We're going to use washers that are rather large and rather thick here with nuts, and we're going to tighten it to the underside from the inside of the cabin. Normally I would have whoever's underneath tighten the nut and not move the bolt, and that way we're sure the seal stays intact. Here you can see Isaiah Grant in the cabin tightening the nut. That tight enough? He'll now tighten all the rest. Now that the stanchion base is in place, we now need to concentrate on creating the stanchion pole. We're going to use a .65 wall stainless steel tubing. This is the thick wall tubing from Sailrite, and we're marking it to 24 inches. You really should use a Sharpie marker, not a pen. And then we use some painter's tape to avoid damage to the pole, and that also helps us to reference that the pole is exactly the length that we need it to be. 24 inches in our circumstance. We'll secure the tubing in a vise and we're using a rag to help prevent damage to the stainless steel finish. We're going to use just a standard jigsaw because that's usually what people have in their tool assortment. And this is a 36 just tooth put, uh, uh, blade. Masking tape on the shoe so it doesn't scratch. We also have a little masking tape on the stainless. There are obviously other ways to cut stainless steel. It's a hard metal to cut. You could use a reciprocating saw, and you'd have to be very careful not to scratch the stainless steel. There are also band saws, but most people have a jigsaw. That's why we're showing it here in the video. It does take a while because stainless steel is tough. You should notice we are making progress, and we are using the exact same blade to make this cut. I don't think that we've changed the blade. Here we're going to work from the opposite side. When you get down to the last portion of the cutting, you'll notice the saw will uh, bounce a lot. That's kind of normal. <laughs> All right, pretty clean cut. If you know the exact size of your pipe, you can have Sayerite cut it to the exact length. Just put that in the notes box on the website. Even if Sayerite cuts it to size, you'll need to clean up the end slightly with a grinder or a Dremel tool. There, that looks sweet. That's a 24 inch section for our boat. Now we're going to take a Dremel tool and we're going to clean the inside of the pipe so that we can place the eye end for stanchions inside the tubing. I know some of you are saying uh, this is a sanding uh, drum for wood, not for metal, and that's true. We really should be using a stone instead of a, a sanding drum, okay. but it works. 
We're marking on the tube the location of the hole because we're going to drill holes and tap them for set screws to hold this stanchion eye in place. We'll be using the set screws from Sailrite that are used for replacements for fittings. But first we must drill and tap holes for that set screw. The set screw calls for a quarter by 28 thread. We're going to use a smaller drill bit here to first pre-drill the hole. Then we're going to move up to the number 3 bit that the tap, the quarter by 28, calls for. We're going to put a hole on one side and we're also going to put a hole on the um, direct opposite side. As you saw earlier in the film, we did lubricate the bit with cutting oil. We'll now replace the smaller drill bit with the number 3 drill bit that it's called for. You can see the holes here in the tubing that we created earlier. It is important to use a drill press. If you do not have a drill press, you could use the drill steadying tool that's sold by Sailrite. But a drill press is always easier. Once that hole is complete, we'll turn it over and we'll remount the other hole on the opposite side. To tap the holes, we use the quarter by 28 uh, tap, and we want to be sure to lubricate that with cutting oil as well. When creating these threads, be sure to reverse the tap uh, with every quarter rotation approximately, because stainless steel is a hard metal to tap. All right, we'll do the other side. We won't show that, but we will do that side as well. When the threads are completed, they'll leave a little bit of burrs on the inside. So again, we'll take our Dremel tool with a sanding uh, drum on it and polish it so that we can press the stanchion eye in into the tubing. Probably better to use a grinding stone rather than a sanding drum, but as you can see, they both would work. A perfect fit. Now, to ensure that the set screws on both sides of this tubing lock into the stanchion eye, we're going to drill a little bit of a pilot hole into the actual stanchion eye base. So we're going to replace that number three drill bit with a smaller drill bit to pre-drill an opening here. You can do this one of two ways. You can use the set screw and screw it in to create a little score in the uh, stanchion eye end base, or you can do as Jim's doing here, being careful to drill through the hole and not cut the threads that we just created. Now, obviously, if you do that, you'll need to put the stanchion eye end in a, in a vise to take it off because obviously there'll be some uh, burrs. Then we're going to put that stanchion eye in in a vice grip. If you have a vice for your uh, for your drill press, you can use that. And we're going to use the number three bit, bit to uh, widen the hole and to also create a little bit more depth. Now we don't go very deep here. You don't want to go too deep because you actually want the uh, set screw to um, not go through past the wall of the tubing. But we could have gone a little bit deeper here. This is probably quite sufficient though. So now when we screw that set screw, which is uh, made for replacements for fittings, it'll sink into the hole and obviously lock the stanchion eye onto the tubing much more securely. It's important to buff out any burrs on there so that the stanchion eye fits nicely into the tubing. This eye end for stanchions is designed for a thick wall tubing, the .65 wall tubing, not any of the uh, smaller uh, wall tubing. It won't work in that. Line up the dimple with the hole in the tubing and then uh, use a set screw, stainless steel replacements for fitting, and screw it into the uh, uh, tubing, securing the stanchion eye in place. Obviously you can see here we could have gone a little bit deeper with our dimple hole, but uh, it's probably not necessary. You do not want to go so deep that the uh, set screw uh, is no longer flush with the tubing wall. 
Well, that's not going anywhere. <clears throat> Your life is secure. We hope so, Isaiah. Now we'll go up to the boat where we've installed the uh, uh, rectangular base lifeline stanchion and we'll release the two set screws there and insert our pipe. The fore and aft. Set Here we'll be using the set screws that automatically come with the uh, uh, stanchion base and we're going to uh, set them in place with that eye, obviously facing fore and aft as Jim has, has explained earlier. We're going to create a dimple here in uh, this position and obviously the second position because these stanchion bases come with uh, two set screws. Then we're going to take this pole back to the drill press and do as we did earlier, create a little bit of a, of a cavity for that set screw to rest in to make sure that the stanchion uh, pole is securely set in the base. Okay. Now that should be enough to mark where we need to drill. And we have two little dots. So this may be difficult to see in the video, but they are there. Now we're going to take it over to the drill press. We're just going to use that uh, number three drill bit and hope we can keep it in those holes. And we obviously always want to lubricate any of this drilling with the cutting oil. Do not cut all the way through the tubing. You just want enough for a cavity for the set screw to sit in. Okay, and do it there and also do it to this hole. Be sure we hold it in the right spot. There we go. That will help hold the pole in the stanchion base. Before inserting the pole into the stanchion base, we want to use a stanchion sleeve with eye for uh, the one inch uh, outside diameter tubing. So we put that in place so that we don't have to obviously uninstall the pole. Be sure to line up your uh, so you can uh, see dimples, little dimples with the set screws. Then lock these set screws, both of them, down very hard. Jim's going to position the stanchion sleeve with eye so that it's facing inward. That's just preference. Okay. One lock line ready to go. And that's all there is to installing a stanchion pole on your boat. I'm Eric Grant with Sarah. Thanks for watching.